Welcome and thank you for joining us here at Life Central. If you want to know more about who we are and what we're all about, check out our website, lifecentral.org.za or like, follow and subscribe to our social media channels. We hope this message speaks into your life and that you will find meaning and purpose through it, guiding you through your daily life. Isn't it true that the best movies are those movies with a twist where the storyline just takes a turn at some point and where you thought you were going to end up is nowhere near where you ended up where somewhere along the line you start to realize oh my goodness the hero is actually the villain and the villain's actually the hero and i thought it was heading in this direction but now it's heading in that direction and and I can't help but but have just kind of paid attention to that and gone, why is it that that as people we can so often buy into that story, relate to that story, where it was heading in one direction and now it's heading in another? And I think the answer to that really does lie in what novelist uh, Peter Kingsnorth said when he said this. He said, all day, every day. We use narratives to try and make sense of the ongoing confusion of reality, of the busyness of being human. That our day was heading in one direction and then something came along and derailed it from where we thought we were going and now we're heading in another direction. Or where speaking to a person and we have a perception of who they are and what they're all about and something happens and that tends to then change how we see them and view them. And the reality is that as we live this life, our lives are part of a story and our lives are busy telling a story. It's like the author Walt Whitman, where, 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 where he just said, you know, the powerful play goes on and that you may contribute a verse. That ultimately your life contributes a verse to the story of life. My life contributes a verse to the story of life. That our lives do tell a story. So I wonder, today, what is the story that you're living in, at least through your eyes? As you consider your life, as you view your life, if you had to consider the, the, the different categories of stories that are out there, what story is your life busy telling? Is it a, is it a drama? Is it a tragedy? Is it a comedy? Is it a horror? <laughs> Is it a romance? Maybe there's not a lot going on and you feel like it's honestly just like a silent movie. Hopefully it's not a murder mystery. But what is the story that your life is busy telling? What is the story that you are living in? How do you perceive it? How do you see it? How are you experiencing it? What's your thinking around this story? It was the Apostle Paul who, who spoke into this, who spoke into the story of our lives and what's being told and how we're viewing it. When he said this, he said, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the, the, the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heavenly realms. Now, he's far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put 
all this under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. When he says church, we know he's not talking about brick and mortar. We know that he's talking about people, you and me, the church, a gathering of people. He carries on and he says, and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ. Who fills all things everywhere with himself. What's Paul busy saying? Paul's busy saying, man, there is a story that is going on that is being told. And the truth be told. Jesus, he's writing the story. Like he rules over this story. He's in control of this story. Ultimately, what Paul's leaning into is that Jesus is the story. And that the story goes on because of him. Maybe today, as you consider the story of your life, as you consider the way that you view your life's story, maybe to help you define this story, a great question to ask is, in this story, who's the bad guy? Who's the bad guy? Am am I the bad guy? (laughs) You know, maybe there's a bit of self-loathing going on there. And and maybe I see myself as the bad guy. You know, maybe that's where you're at. Is someone else the bad guy? You know, someone at work or or, or, or someone, you know, uh, a neighbor or the grumpy man down the street or whatever the case may be. Maybe he's the bad guy. Or maybe in the story of your life, The narrative that you hold is that God is the bad guy. Or maybe you recognize that in truth, there is an enemy to your soul. And that that he's real. And that the devil is the bad guy in your story. Ultimately, how do you explain evil in this world? Like, Where does that stop? Who does that rest on? Who's the bad guy? Another great question to ask is, who's the hero? Who's the hero? Who, you know, like, again, is that you? Is that you? Are you the hero? Do you save the day? Maybe it's someone else in your life. Maybe it's a loved one. Who are you looking, who are you looking toward to come and 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 save the day is it a family member a friend uh, maybe it's it's someone who's come and rescued you before and 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 they're the hero of the story maybe it's god who's the hero who's the bad guy who's the hero where does hope lie like are you confident that the, the, the future of your story is secure? That the future of your story is good? That it's wonderful? Now, last week, uh, if you were with us in person, uh, I mentioned a, a, a statement. I made a statement. And I, I essentially just said that a change of date doesn't bring with it a change of heart. That ultimately a change of heart only comes about when I allow God to change the way I think. And this is, thought isn't original to me in any shape or form. In fact, the Apostle Paul, he, he spoke into that. He spoke into it when he said, don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. 
That's his hope for you. Catch what he says there. Catch what he says there when he says, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Isn't that the hope? Isn't that your hope? To look into your life and kind of look at the parts of your story that you don't like, that you're not happy with, and go, man, I'd love to see real change happen there. I'd love to see transformation happening there. That word transformation, it's where we get the the word metamorphosis from in its original language, where it's like, and you, you know it, you know, caterpillar, butterfly, like completely different um, creatures at the end of the day. Caterpillar, weird little crawly thing, butterfly, beautiful, flying. That's what we desire, don't we? That's what we desire in our lives. And here he says, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And then he says this, he says, then you will learn to know God's will for you. In other words, you'll start to see his story for you. You'll start to see the picture of the future that he has for you. What does it look like? He tells us, he says, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I wonder today, do you believe that about his story for your life? Do you believe that he can transform you into a new person? All we have to do is allow him to start changing the way that we think. Again, if you were in person with us last week, we asked this question. We just asked the question asking, what are you holding on to that's holding you back? What are you holding on to that's holding you back? And I wonder today, as you're listening to this, as you consider the beliefs that you have around your story, around who the hero is, who the villain is, where hope lies, all of these things, as you look at it all, I wonder today, is your thinking, is your belief holding you back? Is that thinking that you're holding on to, is is that the thing that's holding you back? Have you maybe got your heroes and your villains confused? Have you maybe got your heroes and your villains swapped around? Because certain things have happened in life, let's be honest. And as certain things have happened in life, we've allowed the pain from those moments to come and influence our thinking around who's the hero? Who's the villain? Where does hope come from? What really is secure and what isn't? Are you holding on to a belief, if you're honest, that God is not good? God is not good. No, no. If, if, I'm, if, 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 if I'm honest, Ramon, uh, yes, I can buy into that he's, that he's sovereign, that he's all-knowing, that he's all-powerful, that he's creator, you know, that he's God in, in those ways, that he's holy. But good? I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe somewhere along the line, you've bought into a belief. And because you've bought into this belief, that belief today holds you back. You see, guys and ladies, a a belief that God is not good will keep you locked up in a prison of religion. Because religion is void of relationship. Religion is, yes, God is holy. Yes, God is sovereign. God is all of these things. So I can worship him for those things. I can, I can look at him and, and, and recognize those in him. But in reality, it's, it's very professional. But him is good. Him is loving. Him is caring. I struggle with that. And so my relationship is professional. It's not 
personal. It's religious. It's not relational. I wonder, is that where you're at today? And as I said, we're there because we believed something somewhere along the line. And maybe it is those little things that happen in your life that, you've, that, you, that, 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 that you allow that enemy of your soul to come and just whisper into your ear time and time and time and time again. Look at what's happening. Look at how that happened. How can a good God allow that? Is God really good? And we've just allowed him to come and, and speak lies into those spaces of our lives up until the point where we started to believe it. He being the devil, he says, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Guys and ladies, it's time to recognize the lies for exactly that. Lies. And that as long as I keep buying into these lies, as long as I keep listening to, 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 to those distortions within my own thinking, that I'll be held back for the rest of my life. The point is this, is that Jesus is absolutely central and must be central to the narrative that you hold. I wonder, is that true for your life? Is he, is Jesus really absolutely central to the narrative that you hold? Each time we, we check the news, each time we check social media or, 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 or even just open up an email, we're absolutely bombarded with competing narratives, competing storylines for our attention, for our affection, for our hearts. And scripture comes and warns us. It warns us that we live in a battle for the truth. So the question to you and to me is, who gets to determine the narrative for you? Who gets to determine the headlines, the storyline for you? It was frontman for, for you too, Bono, who said, we turn the world into the shape of our pain. We turn the world into the shape of our pain. You see, life starts to fall apart when I allow my pain to form my theology. When I allow my pain to start forming the way that I see God. When I, the way that I start to, to, to see the realities of who He is. It was Jesus Himself who said this. He said, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Today, are you willing to find the truth for your life? To dig into His heart for your life? See, we must hold fast to this narrative. That the story of God that the story of Jesus has been, that it is now, and that it always will be, the story of the world. As you listen to this today, I wonder, what's your next step? What's your next step? And maybe if you're in a place where you're saying, Ramon, it's true, I have, I've started believing lies in my life and it is this thinking of mine that is actually holding me back in life. Then maybe today it's, it's time to just let that thinking go, to let it go, to give it to God and to allow Him 
to continue to write his story in you and through you. And in order to really break free from that, we need to let these lies go. We need to break the agreements that we've made with these lies over a period of time. And if that's you today, I'm going to ask that you just take a moment right now and just pray with me. Just pray with me. We just say, Lord, forgive me, Lord. I dedicate my mind to you again. I renounce my speculation. I surrender the future to you, Lord. Teach me, teach me to take hold of my wandering thoughts. Lord, I let go of these lies. I break the agreement that I have with them. I ask you to remove them from my life. Holy Spirit, will you come and help me? In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to take some practical steps over the next few days, weeks, or maybe just take the next month, there's a beautiful part of David's journal found in Psalm 23. It's six verses. To maybe just take those six verses and to read them. Because it really describes God's heart for you and for me and who He is in our lives. Read it, and maybe you want to rewrite it, phrase for phrase, personalize it, explaining what's, what, what David is communicating in that moment. So read it, rewrite it, and then every morning, recite it. Just repeat it for yourself every morning until you allow the truth of what it says about God and who He is in our lives to drop into your heart and allow him to transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. We love you. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next week.